Hey guys, New Age Soldier here. Thought I'd show you a new program that I'm working on. Um, it's called memory.dll. And I've worked on it in the past with EQ Trainer for EverQuest for the uh, Mac and Titanium. And I'm working on the Trilogy version right now. Um, but I've taken it, I've modified it, and it's become its own thing. And now you can include it within your own trainers. Um, to create something from maybe out of a cheat table that you've created in Cheat Engine. So I thought I'd briefly show you. So here we have my cheat table. As you can see here we have a lot of different weapons for Modern Warfare 2. The character health, god mode, uh, the grenade car slash uh, knife icon. It's whenever you're killed by something it shows what you were killed by. Uh, the bloody scenes I don't think actually work. They work sometimes, but then they would not work another time, so I wouldn't even pay attention to those. Z-axis, I was kind of messing with to see if I could just float about the map or something. No clip and time scale. Now these are built-in cheat uh, codes for the game, but you have to modify the configuration file, so I thought I'd just find the value for that and just use it. So let's say we, ma we made our cheat table here. And uh, notice that a lot, of, a lot of the programs out there now for uh, creating a, a trainer you need um, to find some of these static values like this. It can't include the base, it can't include anything. You just have to find this value and this value only, otherwise nothing else will work. Um, and most of the time it's just easier to find the program, the, the base module plus the uh, pointer address. But, you know, I just thought we could make it a little bit easier and create a library file that will allow us to uh, insert all these functions in a trainer uh, and create it very quickly. Um, so here's my form that I created. It's just a simple win form. Uh, I have the time scaler right here. It's a track slider, I believe. It's called. created some buttons for adjusting that. Um, that's for the time scale. And uh, no clip hop button, as well as God mode, infinite ammo. And it also shows the process ID number so you can tell if it's actually connected to the correct process or not. Let's say you want to create this right now. You want to use memory.dll within your uh, trainer, within your form that's going to become your trainer uh, in the future. So first you would add the reference. You'd right click, add, reference, point to the memory.dll. You'd go down here to browse, browse, find it, add it. It's now there. Okay, now it's added to under here, so under references you'll be able to see it, it's memory right there. Now we have to use it, so type in using memory, I'll just type in it again just to show you that it will actually come up and suggest that you want to use that namespace. So say yes, you want to use that namespace uh, within this win form, and then you have to type in public or private, depending. If you wanted to use it within the entire form itself, you'd really want to put it outside of any sort of functions. So up in the upper portion right here, you'd want to type in basically this, public memory. You know, So we basically, uh, every time we type in mem, we can reference to those functions within this uh, namespace in an external library file. So once we do that, the only reason why I have to type in this right here is just because we need to find that process ID number uh, for a certain process name. That's all. So you will have to type in just a little bit of code to get started. You're going to search the process list, which is what we're doing here. We're searching the process list, so we're going through every process in this in in this compu on this computer. And uh, once we hit a process name of IW4SP, that's what it is. Uh, I think they called it that because it's Infinity Ward. Uh, 4 means Call of Duty 4, uh, SP for single player. So that's that's what it's called. Uh, like, for example, if we wanted to use it for on um, something, uh, let's say GitHub, if I right-click on it and go to, um, go to details here, it would be called GitHub. Not, uh, don't include the .exe. Alright, so once we get it loaded, we're going to create also a public string for the process ID, which I did up here, so that way we can use this process ID wherever we want to. So public string, because it's a string, uh, and then 
the variable name. Uh, you can come up with whatever name that you want to. So again, process ID, and then we're going to use right here where we typed in see process process. We're going to use that the ID, and we're going to convert that ID to a string to store within this variable. Uh, the only reason why I said loaded here, uh, it's just a simple boolean, which means you know true or false. Um, and then we're going to break that for each statement. So when it loops, we can just stop it. Once we find the game process, once we find a process called this, I'm going to break it and stop the loop. Uh, the loaded uh, Boolean that I created here uh, is for down here in the background worker. A background worker is similar to a time a timer. If you want to create a timer, um, Timers are within the same thread, so every time it ticks, it will interrupt <clears throat> the form. It'll basically make it stutter or freeze or lock up as it's trying to process that information because it's, it's all within one thread. So a background worker will create two threads. One is the uh, you know the main interface and all that sort of stuff, whatever's going on in that one, and then the background worker is a separate thread. So every time it's loading, it won't interfere with your interface or anything else. So that's why I created this. I create an infinite loop within that background worker, and that's where I put this function to open the game process. And then that's why I also I created a boolean down here for loaded, so that way, basically, once we find the process and we're all done, I'm going to go ahead and set it to turn off and so that way every time it goes through this uh, loop again right up here it's basically saying if it's loaded it's going to return and stop so I'm going to uh, if I were to build it I created my codes.ini file which which stores all the same values that I have within my cheat trainer like for example here's god mode which is base which would be our base module uh, we don't have to actually type in the name uh, my program actually figures out what the base is and then the pointer address. And you can create as many offsets as you want as well. But let's go down here to God mode. As you can see, that mimics what's up here. Um, I also include the memory.dll. You must do that because the library file, you know, it's getting the functions from it, so it has to be right next to the executable. As well as the codes that I and I, I usually place right next to here, but you can create subdirectories wherever, um, we, which we load within our program as well right here which is just a string and we use that string code file because here it says where the application started up at look for the codes to I and I and the code file is being used right here within our memlib to read the integer of god mode uh, because the integer here will be obviously a one or a zero uh, boolean turn on or off god mode so now we'll go ahead and open up single player trainer and what I was saying before the reason why I put it into the background worker to constantly check for is the game running is that way we can open this first and then open up our game instead of having to open up our game minimize then go into our trainer this way it gives you the option to either launch the game first or launch the game after you can do whatever you want to and eventually it'll hook itself to there and start reading that memory so process is loaded we'll go ahead and open up our game as you can see process 2600 if I go into task manager right here IW4SP and I go to details 2600 PID so it's pointing to the correct program so let's go into our game now as you know these some of these uh, <laughs> special ops are very difficult um, I can give you a pretty good example right here how it says kill all 15 juggernauts on the oil rig You'll, this will pro this probably isn't even possible as well as high explosion says kill all 10 juggernauts using only explosions and a knife you'd be insane to even try this so what makes you think I'm gonna get three stars if they don't even think I can do it so let's go ahead and play it I'll play on veteran mode and it's going to take just a little bit to load. I, I have this game on a spinning hard drive. Ready up. So, let's go ahead and load up our god mode, infinite ammo. And we can press F2 if we want to use no clip. And we can also increase and decrease speed of the game uh, using this time scale. Let's go back in game. Alright. It's kind of a poor example because these weapons only have one shot in them. So actually, it's a pretty poor example of infinite ammo. As you can see, god mode, they're not even hurting me. 
And if we go into no clip mode, which is F2, we can go ahead and fly around the map, do whatever. <laughs> um, this is a built-in cheat, like I said, but you have to configure it. See, poor, poor example of infinite ammo. After I kill him, though, I can get um, I think his weapon. No, I guess I can't. So let's go ahead and quit out of this. Um, let's see. Let's go back. Let's do terminal. Terminal's a very difficult one. I will show you one of the funniest cheats: uh, time scale. Uh, in time scale, you could bind keys. Like if you want to buy, bind the U key to slow down, bind I to go back to normal again. That's all you could really do. But with my program, you can press uh, plus or minus as hot keys. As you can see, I have infinite ammo. as well as infinite uh, magazine, infinite magazine clips. So uh, yeah, I'll show you what it's like to speed up. Time scale. Now, I, like I said, uh, in my cheat trainer, it creates a hotkey for plus and minus. So go ahead and press and hold minus or plus to speed up time. As you can see, I'm still talking uh, <laughs> normally on the microphone. This is time six speed right now. I can't. I almost can't even walk. <laughs> it's impossible to press forward and backwards. really good for if you have missions that you just want to go through, like you're tired, you know, you're tired of walking really slowly uh, through a mission or something like that, and you just want to just run, complete it, because you know where you're going, and you're just tired of uh, how slow it takes your character to walk somewhere or something like that. So let's slow it down. And I love how their voices speed up too. <laughs> but if I slow it down, we can actually get into slow motion. <laughs> and we can just jump, fire, it's almost like the Matrix. And I think they did it for when you do a breach on the wall. Like when you do a breach, uh, it slows down so you can uh, kill everyone that speeds back up again. And I think that's the reason why they even put it into the game to begin with. But I'm amazed that it slows down, it slows down and speeds up literally everything. No matter what map you're on, any map you play on, it actually it actually does that. So I'll speed it back up again. I think this is around normal, maybe. Now it feels a little too fast. So yep, that's what that's what I'm speed it up just a little bit so you can hear their voices. Pretty much all I want to show you, really. I'll go ahead and quit out of this. It also speeds up the menus, too. <laughs> you can do a little remix there. Uh, but as you can see, you can reset the timer and move it all over the place and make it different speeds and everything like that. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty much it for the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 trainer. But it's a very good example. Uh, my source code is available on GitHub, so you can go ahead and check that out. Um, I'll, it also shows you a good example of how to create hotkeys. Uh, if you if you did look at my EQ trainer program, it's probably it's very convoluted with different uh, you know different functions that do all sorts of different stuff because that you know it's an MMO and there's a wide variety of scripts and codes going on there all over the place. Um, but this is more 
vanilla, I would say. The only thing that's out of place within this source code is how to make a hotkey, which is right here. There's only really a few pieces of code, like right here um, and right here. It's just those two pieces right there. As well as you do have to um, invoke this registry hotkey as one of the native functions. Um, and then you can use it right here, where you create the ID number as as associated with regist register hotkey right here, and the uh, this integer associates with up here, and the keys F2, OEM plus, which refers to the plus that's next to the backspace, and then uh, add, which is the on the number pad. <laughs> I didn't write these. This, this is how Microsoft wrote this. Um, probably way back in the day I'm sure they sure, sure they wrote this up in the first place but you know now we all have to just put up with it I guess <laughs> um, and we do a few other little um, memory writes as you can see I have to write all those uh, codes but the one of the beautiful things of this um, program memory.dll allow is is it you can write just one uh, function write memory where you want to write it to uh, you can create multiple code files if you want to instead of just one. Um, and then what type of write is it or read? Is it an integer, a float value, which, you know, you can use decimals, same thing, decimal float. All, I understand, you know, different sizes and stuff like that, but um, basically the same thing within uh, memory, sort of. Um, if you want to write a byte, like, like just one byte, um, a string like I said, float integers, stuff like that. Uh, so you don't have to write lots and lots of lines of code. All you have to do is write this one line of code and say what you want to write, what you want to read um, within uh, within this function. So hope you guys enjoy, and uh, hopefully you find a lot of use out of the memory.dll program. And if you want to learn more about it, visit newagesoldier.com which will be in the description for this video. And follow me on social media, ERFG12. On Twitter, Facebook is New Age Programmer. And uh, thanks for watching.